thank you very much for coming, and I now request the Honorable Foreign Minister to take the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning to you all. Indeed, I'm very pleased and honored by the invitation of BIF. I had the opportunity last year to come here. I don't can't remember whether I had the opportunity to speak before uh, the gathering here, but I'm sure that I came here and took a photograph at the lobby and in the downstairs. Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, and good morning to you all. You know that just on 7th January, we had the election. And Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has been elected for the fourth consecutive term as the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. And election was very peaceful compared to the other election we had in the past less violence, election was in a very festive mood, and voter turnout was good, I would say, because voter turnout was 41.8%, almost 42%. That day was very cold in terms of Bangladesh, not in terms of the European countries, of course. <laughs> uh, and it was a foggy day. If that would not be the case, then voter turnout would be even more, 10% more. If you look at the elections uh, uh, held in different countries in Europe, in Portugal, I think in 2022, they had election, voter turnout was 39%. In uh, uh, Czech Republic, voter turnout was around 40%. And in uh, uh, Ireland, they had election, voter turnout was also low. So compared to these elections, I'm, there are many other elections around the globe, but I'm referring to these elections because these are the advanced countries, member of the European Union. That's why I'm telling about these elections. You know that we had a lot of challenges in holding the election because one party, BNP, and its ally, Jamaat Islami, radical Jamaat Islami, opposed the election. And uh, they openly declared that they would register the election and carried out a series of violent activities, including arson attack on the people, on the vehicle, on the train, on the government installations, and et cetera. Even on 5th January, they carried out heroic arson attack on a train and a whole family, a child, mother, and father was killed, was burned to death. So despite these atrocities, election was very good in a very festive mood. And uh, for the fourth consecutive term and for the fifth time, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has formed the government. So I, I'm really thankful uh, to the people of India, Indian government, because the Indian government has stood firmly beside us to continue the democratic process because there are many ploys to disrupt the democratic process in Bangladesh disturbing the election, but India stood by us very firmly. And the intellectual community here also, I would say, you also stood beside us. So we are really thankful to you for helping us in uh, continuation of the democratic process in Bangladesh in all the election. And uh, on 26 January, people of India celebrated 75th Republic Day and I would like to congratulate you all for this special occasion. I'm honored here uh, to speak before you. And you know that uh, I have come here by the invitation of uh, Honorable Foreign Minister, External Affairs Minister of uh, uh, India, Dr. Jai Shankar. This is my first bilateral visit, not first foreign trip, but first bilateral visit. I had to go to the Kampala to join NAM summit, and also I had to go to Brussels to join in the Pacific Ministerial Conference. These are multilateral forums, but my first visit as foreign minister uh, to India, 
and first invitation has come from India as well. So for that, I want to register my thanks to the Indian government, especially uh, Sri Jai Shankar. And uh, after being appointed as a foreign minister, this is my first speech in abroad uh, 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 before a civil society uh, gathering. So I'm really thankful for that to the BIF. Uh, you know that our relationship is, India-Bangladesh relationship is bonded by blood because in 1971, I was a little child. I remember the days. And uh, in 1971, 10 million people fled to India. And the Indian people not only opened, Indian government opened the border and Indian people opened their heart to give refuge to our 10 million people. <laughs> Not only that, you know that 3 million people sacrificed their lives to liberate our country under the leadership of our founding father, Bangabandhu Sheikh Najibur Rahman. And along with them, the Indian people and the members of the army also sacrificed their blood to liberate our country. So our relationship is bonded by blood. The relationship between India and Bangladesh is not comparable the relationship with any other country because this is bonded by blood. I recall my memories. I want to share this because I would not have the opportunity to share this with you all individually. My memory of 1971, I was a little child at the time eight years old, little child, a little boy, you can say. <laughs> I was a little boy, but I still I remember everything, what happened. Our houses were burned to ashes. Whole village was burned to ashes by the Pakistani army. Many people were killed in my village. Few people were killed in my village by the Pakistani army. It was a remote village. It was not easy village to go. Uh, it was difficult to go by, by vehicle, but Pakistan army managed to go. And uh, so we had to, we, we went to different villages along nine months time. We fled to nearby village, then that village became vulnerable again, and then another village. Then we had to flee to our, to my mother's maternal place, I mean, my maternal grandfather's place, and that became vulnerable. Then we had to flee to another place. So this was the, I mean, suffering that uh, we had to go through. This is not only me, this is the millions of people, I mean, suffered in this way. So I remember the day 7th December, if I am not wrong, 7th December, uh, Indian Army landed five, six kilometers far from our village. And it was not possible for them to come by vehicle to our village. My father was a army league leader at the time, an organizer of our independence movement. So they came to meet with my father to have a, meet, to have a meeting. And they came on foot. When they are coming, walking few kilometers, five, six kilometers, uh, through the villages. All the villagers from both sides of the road were greeting them. And some people was offering whatever they could offer. Some were offering water, some were offering flour, some were offering something else. And I was a little boy, so I thought everybody's offering. So what I could do, I pulled a radish from, uh, from, the, uh, from the field and offered them. And they were very, I mean, uh, astonished, a little boy. And then one uh, army person gave me a uh, uh, atani, atani, 50 paisa. Atani, you understand the, what is atani, 50 paisa. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I kept it for a long time, long, many years. 
But when I go in, to in abroad for higher studies, then my family shifted from, uh, from our uh, 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 residence at uh, in Chittagong town to another, then it has been lost. So I, I remember this because the Indian army was uh, deemed by the people. They had come to salvage us. And that's why the way they were greeted, I still remember. And that moved me to pull a radish from the field and to offer them. So how the people of India uh, helped us in 1971 in liberating our country. So we, we shall remain thankful and grateful as long as Bangladesh will remain. Thanks to you all. I want to pay my homage to our founding father, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Because Bengali nationhood emerged 5,000 years ago. But Bengalis in our part was never independent. This is Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who I mean, let the people to liberate Karmi, uh, to, li to, liberate, to liberate the country from the Pakistani occupation. So I want to pay my homage today to our founding father, Bangabandhu Sheikh Majibur Rahman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to speak about our relationship in the last decade or 15 years' time. In last one decade or 15 years' time, the bank India-Bangladesh relationship has gone to new height under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. I remember the days I was appointed in 2008 when we won the election. In 2009, on 6 January, I was appointed as a state minister for foreign affairs, I remember. Then I, I had the opportunity to speak uh, uh, Foreign Service Academy, if I'm not wrong, in Dhaka in February. Then after my speech, when I uh, uh, came out from the uh, gathering, the media came before me and asked me, because transit was a much talked issue at that time. And BNP did a campaign that if Amali goes to power, then they will give transit to India and uh, Indians will pass through us and so and so, and many things. Then Dada was the high commissioner <laughs> in uh, uh, Bangladesh. So they asked me, uh, since you are, as you are State Minister of Foreign Affairs, what is your position on transit? Many asked me. And I told, look, transit, we would, uh, we are, uh, discussing the transit, transit would be beneficial for both the countries. That will benefit the people of both the countries. Uh, because connectivity is important. Look at Europe. In Europe, they fought with each other. And just a few years back, a Belgian guy had to take uh, a visa to go to uh, uh, France. Even I had to. Now they don't need visa. And connectivity how has benefited Europe as a whole. So connectivity is, is good for both the countries. That was in the newspaper. And two days later, I met with the prime minister for different issue. The prime minister said, thank you that you have said it very courageously. <laughs> and, uh, and I see not much criticism. Because uh, that was the issue in the election in 2008 election. So, but today, transit is the reality. It is taking place for the last couple of years. And I remember when I was environment minister, that is also from uh, second half of 2009 to 2014, I used to go to different, I mean, seminars, symposium, conferences, UNFCC conference, and et cetera. 
everywhere people used to speak from our region, the civil society people used to speak, and I, me too, that Nepal has the potential of producing 100,000 megawatt of electricity, and Bhutan has the potential of producing 20,000 megawatt of electricity or more. If we could make use of this, this potentiality, then our region would be benefited, the people would get uh, energy with a cheaper price, and we could protect our environment. Uh, uh, and also, I mean, we could reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission. That was the perception, that was the conception at that time, until 2014-15. But today, that is the reality. India has signed a treaty with Nepal to take, within 10 years' time, 10,000 megawatt of electricity from the hydro. And we have signed a treaty with Nepal for importing 40 megawatt of electricity. That will become operational within a few months' time. We are negotiating on tariff. So how the relationship has been evolved over the last 10, 15 years' time? and connectivity, uh, and uh, also the people-to-people -people contact. Uh, India, Bangladesh, for India, uh, in India, Bangladesh is, the uh, Indian embassy in Bangladesh is the highest visa issuing mission abroad of India. Per year, I think uh, 15 or 16 lakhs visa, six, even more, 17 lakhs. It is increasing day by day. And a uh, huge number of people are coming every year to India for different purposes, uh, tourism, health purpose, study, and et cetera. The same also, I mean, few lakhs, uh, three, four hundred thousand visas are also issued <coughs> by the Bangladesh Embassy and the, I mean, our Deputy High Commissions and Eastern High Commission Office around the country uh, from India. <laughs> few hundred thousand visas also issued. So this shows how people-to-people -people contact has been increased over the last couple of years' time, which were the issue of debate 10 years back, 14 years back, 15 years back. These are the reality today. This is called leadership. Because people, majority people in Bangladesh was opposing transit. But majority of people today are favoring transit. And they've realized that how people are benefited for that, and our region is benefited. So this is because of the leadership. And Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina very often says, this is uh, um, uh, indeed uh, was told by uh, many people, that leaders should, be, leaders should lead the people. Leaders should not be led by the people. So though people had the objection, but our leaders, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has led the people to this stage and our relationship has been evolved. Indeed, we are going through a golden chapter of our relationship, Shonali Odhai of our relationship and India-Bangladesh relationship is a role model for neighborhood democracy today. I would not speak uh, uh, very much. I would prefer rather Q&A. That would be better, I think. That would be more lively. So I would uh, conclude very soon. And this is because uh, this Shonali Adai, because of the leadership, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Sri Narendra Modi. You know that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina declared since the adoption in power in 2009, she declared that by adopting zero tolerance policy against terrorism, and she declared that our land would not be allowed for any terrorist activities to destabilize the neighboring country or destabilize the region, and we have been following that. And that has brought 
stability in our region. And uh, you know that we have India-Bangladesh as security cooperation, and uh, we have security cooperation on a number of issues. Also, uh, for military purposes also, we have the cooperation. Indian LOC has been offered for 500 million USD for uh, security cooperation. And in multilateral forums, also we have a lot of cooperation and mutual understanding. It is indeed a matter of happiness that uh, with the commitment of both leadership of, uh, of late, our cooperation uh, has, exp has expanded in multifaceted multi area, such as security, energy, connectivity, trade, investment, defense, <coughs> culture, people to people contact, etc. Currently, we are giving uh, utmost priorities on three many areas of cooperation, security and mutual trust and confidence, promoting connectivity, both physically and people to people connectivity. And three, all round economic cooperation uh, on a win win basis. And uh, you know that 2023 has been a very remarkable year for both the countries. I'm happy to note that uh, the year 2023 has been a remarkable year in promoting the unique relationship between our two countries. The year 2023 witnessed a number of achievements in consolidating the relationship, including the visit of Honorable Prime Minister uh, to New Delhi uh, in September 2023 to attend the G20 summit as the only leader from the South Asian region. This was because of the invitation um, by the Indian Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. The year 2023 also witnessed some other milestone achievements like joint production of Father of the Nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman's biopic, Mujib, The Making of a Nation. And I had the opportunity to work for that because I was uh, information and broadcast minister for the last five years, and this was under my ministry. So uh, I had the opportunity to make this uh, movie. And this shows how we cooperate in different fields culturally and in other fields. Because Bangabandhu led the liberation war, and Bangabandhu got help for Indian people and Indian government at the time. We got help from you, from you people and Indian government to liberate our country. Uh, and uh, operationalization of the agreement for the use of the Chattogram and Mangla port has taken place in the last year. Uh, we have finalized all the legal instrument. SOP has been signed and trial uh, 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 operation has taken place. All these has taken place in the last year. The relationship in 2023 has not only deepened the ever evolving relationship, it also witnessed how the two neighbors could collaborate, could collaborate each other at the international multilateral <coughs> forum. It has been manifested in participation of Bangladesh at the G20 under Indian presidency that I've mentioned. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, we have been working uh, 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 on different uh, international forum uh, jointly, and we have the identical view in different international forums. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, India today stands as the most vibrant, largest democracy of the world. You will be having election. Uh, it will start in April, I think. Election schedule might be declared in the next month. And uh, Mr. Jayashankar told me that there will be one million troop movement for holding the election. One million troop movement across the country because election will take place face by face. And uh, there's a one million troop movement. Ladies and gentlemen, today 
India is one of the most advanced developing nation. You are proud to send uh, a vehicle to the moon. And we are proud also as we are from the region. What is the name? Chandra? Chandra Bhati. Chandrayon. So Chandrayon landed in moon in the last year. And you are, pro you are proud of that. We are also proud of that as we are from the subcontinent. This shows your ability how fast India is advancing. Ladies and gentlemen, on economic achievement, uh, you know that I should highlight some of the economic, some economic achievement of Bangladesh, where we are 15 years back, where we are now. In 2009, when we formed the government, our per capita income was 6,000 US dollar. And today, our per capita income is 2,800 US dollar. It would cross 3,000 US dollar by this time if dollar would not be devalued. And our GDP size in 2009 was 80 billion US dollar. And today, our GDP size is 578 billion US dollar, six times more. And our budget was 83,000 83, crore taka in taka, 83,000 crore taka. And now it is 7,67,000 crore taka or more. It's more than 7,50,000 crore taka, I would say. Uh, is 11 times more, 10 or 11 times more, bigger. And you know that Bangladesh has been a food deficit country since 1950s, when the land Bangladesh has been a food deficit country for since 19, mid 1950s, when the population was 55 million. And today the population is 170 million, conservative estimate, but uh, I would say it's between 170 and 175 million, the population today in Bangladesh. Arable land has not been increased by inch, rather has been decreased by 20% to 30%, 25% at least. But Bangladesh now is a self-sufficient country in food grain production. And uh, our food grain production back in 1972 was 10 million metric ton. And today, our food grain production is 40 million metric ton, four times. So food intake also has been increased in Bangladesh, you see. And Bangladesh, in terms of area, is the 92 number of the world. And Bangladesh is a country of drought, is a country of flood, is a country of uh, uh, storm, is a country of cyclone, and is a country facing all the challenges coming from the uh, climate change. But Bangladesh, in rice production number three, in vegetable production number four, in sweet water fish production number three, in potato production number seven. These are not because of the magic. These are because of the magical leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Despite having all these obstacles, Bangladesh has crossed in all index. We have crossed Pakistan. We have crossed Pakistan a few years back in economic index, in social index, in human index, in health index, we have crossed Pakistan six, seven years back. And today in the Pakistani television, in the talk show, people says, people discuss, there is the issue of debate in the Pakistani politics and the issue of debate in the Pakistani civil society. Look how Bangladesh, Bukha Bangali, in their language, how Bukha Bangali 
Amito, I, I can't speak Hindi or Urdu. I understand a little bit. How Bukha Bangali has progressed, you see. Because we are a little bit shorter than then, we are a little bit darker than then. So they used to call us uh, Bukha Bangali. So how we have progressed, this is the issue of debate. When Imran Khan from the government, I think four and a half years back, then he declared that give me 10 years time, I would transform Pakistan into Sweden. Then there was debate in Pakistani television. You don't need to transform Bangladesh into Sweden. Within 10 years, you try to transform Bangladesh into, transform Pakistan into Bangladesh. Try for that. This was the issue of debate. This is the issue of debate. Or Nawaz Sharif came back from exile, landed in Pakistan. He said, look at Bangladesh, how under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh has progressed. So this is the success of founding Bangladesh by our founding father, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And this is the success of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, daughter of our founding father, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, how he is running the country. She is running the country. So Bangladesh has progressed a lot over the last 15 years' time. In Dhaka, whoever had gone 10 years back, if 10 years later you go, you can recognize Dhaka city. The person from Bangladesh who had gone to Middle East to work or elsewhere in the world, in Europe, in America, if she or she had not come back within last 10, 15 years time, when she or he comes back, she goes to the village, she or he cannot recognize this village. This is the dramatic change in Bangladesh that has taken place over the last 15 years time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a strong Bangladesh is also offering a lot of opportunities for India and to strengthen bilateral relationship uh, between our two countries. Uh, I want to conclude here because everybody is waiting for uh, Q&A, I know. I shall enjoy as well. So our relations is based on emotion, emotional bonds. We need to address the uh, 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 issues of our people, addressing uh, border in, uh, broader includes uh, sharing common river, in particular long pending Tista, removing trade barriers, supply of essential commodities may contribute to huge confidence <coughs> and uh, goodwill among the people of Bangladesh towards our uh, closest and most important neighbor, India. Uh, finally, I would say, uh, here I see the people who worked in Bangladesh. I see the people who has been working for Bangladesh because uh, now many non-resident ambassadors are here. So over the last 15 years time, our relationship has been evolved, has been strengthened, and people-to-people -people contact has been increased. If just a single country progress in a region, that is not healthy, that is not sustainable. We need the progress of the whole region as a whole. And for that, we need to work together. As you helped us in liberating our country, stood by us, helped us, opened your heart, gave refuge to 10 million people. So today also, we have many things to do together to strengthen the ties and thereby I mean, to give the benefit of the people of both the countries and as a whole, the people of the region. Thanks to you all. Thank you.